The first thing you have to do in setting up to do the skirt is establish the forwardmost position of the tandem slide assembly. It's usually easy to see with some kind of a stopper bar. This one goes all the way across. Other ones have just a short peg. You establish the point on the tandem assembly, which is the most forward position. In a lot of cases, it'll be the I-beam that is the closest to the stop, which would position it right here if this tandem was all the way forward. In this case, this I-beam right next to the stop will give sufficient clearance if the tandems are in the most forward position. So now that we've established the very first I-beam that's clear of the tandem wheels when they're all the way forward, this is your start point. Now that we've established this is our starting point, we found that in, instead of doing a chalk line to establish the, the line for all of the stanchions, we've used this bungee cord and a string with a hook. We're going to hook this hook right here at the outboardmost part of the trailer and then move forward with this string to the forwardmost point. I'm going to take the other end of this string line and hook it up forward next to the landing gear, but we have to be careful that we don't touch this bracket assembly, the gusset for the landing gear. So. Right here is as close as I can get so that the panel will clear this gusset as it comes forward. Now you can see this red line is perfectly straight going from the rearmost point to the frontmost point, clearing the gussets to the landing gear. It also keeps the skirt inboard enough that you don't have to play around with the wiring on the turning light midpoint on the trailer. Another way that you can install this trailer which is slightly more efficient from an aerodynamic standpoint is to set every stanchion three and a half inches inboard of the outside of the trailer and run down the line. This allows you to still clear the turning light and then the very last stanchion you put on the outboard edge of the trailer creating a little bit of a kicker so to speak to divert the air cleanly around the tandems. By doing so though, once you establish the, the first set of stanchions, the last four you'll have to start turning to come inboard to catch up on the inside of the landing gear gusset. It's on the diagram included in your instruction page. Alright, now we've established where these stanchions are going to go. Every trailer is going to get 13 of these stanchions per side for a total of 26 per trailer. This stanchion hardware includes a J-bolt, which will go through here and counter a pose on the I-beam. You'll have a reinforcement bracket, which goes on to reinforce the whole assembly where it cinches onto the bottom of the beam. You'll also have a washer and a nylon lock nut. To assemble this, you're going to need any hammer and a cordless driver with a deep well half inch socket. Alright, as you saw earlier, we laid out all, three thir uh, all 13 stanchions so they're ready to go. Now it's just a matter of finding that straight edge line with a hammer and putting them on. They'll all stay without any fasteners in place. You can see it's pretty easy to do. We're just going to continue this way right down the line and we'll come back and add the fasteners. Now that we have all of these stanchions on, you'll notice that we're using every other I-beam. So they're on two foot centers. If you find a trailer configuration that is not on two foot centers, such as paper haulers who use nine foot centers for their I-beams, you should use 
whatever you need to get within two feet. If it's a little bit more or a little bit less, it really doesn't matter. These all work together once the substrate is installed. Sometimes you'll find that when you reach the main landing gear post, it doesn't come out exactly even like this trailer does. At that point, it doesn't matter if you put an additional one of these on. You're just going to have additional, um, an additional J-bolt and additional fasteners, which are included with every kit. So you just start in the back first, work your way forward, doing every other I-beam, every two feet in 95% of the trailers. Whether it's an aluminum I-beam or a steel I-beam, the aluminum I-beams are a little bit thicker, but you just have to hit these on and they will go over any I-beam. We've yet to find a manufacturer that these will not work on. Now we have all the stanchions on and in their location and we've hammered them all on. As you can see, they hold their position quite well. Now is you're going to take the J-bolt and put it through on the opposite side of the hook. You're going to take this piece and put it over there. You're going to take your washer and your nylon lock nut. We found it's easier to do all of this assembly on all of the stanchions and come back and tighten them with a creeper all at the same time. using an impact driver to cinch these in place. It helps to have a swivel, but it's not necessary. And what you'll find is when you're using an impact driver and you tighten this up, which I'm going to do in a minute, keep your finger or your hand on the J bolt on the back side, assuring that it's hooking on that I-beam so it doesn't spin and catch your finger. And as you start to tighten this up, you're going to notice that this 12 gauge galvanized steel reinforcement bracket will actually start to squeeze in and almost distort a little bit. You'll know it's tight enough when on the back side of the J-bolt, you'll start to actually feel that J-bolt start to try and straighten as you pull it. Watch how I do this first one. and it's designed for the bottom part of the skirt to bend if you hit an obstruction. Here is the next bend point. That lets you give plenty of clearance and it will still find its way back down straight. But this part is totally protected with the plate and the hook and the J-bolt. What we're doing right now is assembling all of the brackets and fasteners, but we're not tightening it because it's much faster working with your hands to just loose assemble everything first. These naturally have enough of a, a pinch in the molded plastic that they'll stay in place while you're doing all of this assembly. Right, now everything is all loose assembled, all the fasteners are in place. Now it's just a matter of running down the line and tightening everything up. Self-tapping sheet metal screw, 
It's only to hold the panel in place while you're securing the permanent fasteners. Dan's going to go ahead and put the first one up and show you. It's important that you overlap this stanchion just a little bit. And you'll see on the other side, it's overlapped the equal, equal amount on the other stanchion. That's really all you need to hold this in place while all the other fasteners are attached. But we're going to go ahead and put on all three right now. It's important to make sure that this one is overlapping the stanchion and the other a little bit. And this is why we start in the back of the trailer so that these are shingles to the airflow this way rather than catching going forward. What we have now is the last panel. We're overlapping the front stanchion, or going just past it a little bit, and we're going to secure this now in place. You'll notice there's a pretty large overlap right here. And what that is for is it allows us to send the same size sheet for every trailer. And some people that never run their tandem assemblies all the way forward that are trying to maximize that savings are using these sheets and actually netting a little bit longer skirt. That's why you have the 13 stanchion for each side is it will accommodate this thing at an even longer position. Most trailers though you'll find the forward most position of the trailer tandem assembly and the landing gear allows for 23 feet. This right here is 24 combined. So the little bit of overlap here really isn't going to affect its performance. It's just going to overlap double and it'll allow you to put the fasteners here. In the event that you have a large overlap where there is no stanchion, we recommend putting the same three fasteners just to secure those two panels together at their intersection. All right, that's good enough, Danny. We get it. All right, all of the stanchions are now secured permanently. All of the panels are now hung temporarily right where they belong so everything's nice and straight. These stanchions are almost three inches wide and it's important to have a uniform look on the outside for your fasteners. So what you'll see is that you've got a box section right here. You shoot for the center of the box to drill the first hole. The next position you'll see two little dots right here and two little dots right here. That's your target to be able to drill your middle hole and the bottom hole. You'll see that this panel is longer than the stanchion. We did that intentionally so that this part will bend first with all of your ground contact. And rather than making a separate boot which tears and needs additional fasteners, it was just easier to incorporate it into the total sheet and leave it at a place where it can bend because it's not supported for the bottom few inches. The next thing we're going to do is Danny has these carriage bolts right here. He's on the other side and he's pushing these through. And then what we're using is a fender washer, a lock nut, and a regular nut. People ask why we don't use nylon lock nuts and there's a reason for that. The carriage bolt actually has a square section under the head. And what that does is bite into the plastic round hole and keep them from turning so that we can properly secure these. And we're using a 7 16 deep well socket on a cordless driver again. And all we do is, do, is tighten it until it clicks. You get faster at it if you can actually put the washer and the lock washer together and put them on in one motion and follow it with the nut. Washer, lock washer, and nut. These come back, and this one is finished. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple.
see where we are right here is a seam where two of them go together. So we put a additional fastener down on the bottom edge here so that if they do make ground contact, they're not sloppy down here. The two sheets have been connected together down at the ground contact point. back panel, the middle panel, and the front panel. When you overlap the panels, it's important to remember on the outside right here is where they're overlapping and you can see that it's on a stanchion. It's a good idea to put an extra fastener down here along the bottom edge so when it makes ground contact they're still well connected. Down here you'll see the next overlap. Right here you can see a slight shadow it isn't quite on the stanchion. I usually use four or five inches as a rule of thumb. You're going to want to put an extra set of fasteners on this seam right here, which is on the outside visually. So we're going to follow the same place. One hole here, another hole here, and another hole here, and then obviously on the bottom where it's connected. So you're actually attaching three to every fastener, but you do have to look around to make sure that on the bottom edge where there's a seam, you reinforce it with a fastener, or where there's a large unsupported overlap between stanchions, you put some additional fasteners, and they are all included in the kit. The reason for that is that we needed to make enough material and enough fasteners that every trailer manufacturer with their variations and dimensions our skirt is universal and can accommodate all of them. We're on the last stanchion now underneath the landing gear. The gussets start back in here and are on the outside of this panel. We're as close to them as we can be, but we don't have to attach to the gussets themselves. These stanchions here are more than adequate to hold on to this outside panel without attaching to any other structures on the trailer. The reason that I told you earlier that you needed a universal joint is sometimes the gearbox for the landing gear is right in front of here. This trailer happens to have the gearbox on the outside of the gusset. But sometimes finagling around in here doing different things, especially attaching the stanchions is where that universal joint comes in handy. I'm going to go ahead and just screw on the last stanchion, just like all the others. fasteners you're using and separate them in a bin so that you're not trying to reach for everyone randomly. This makes it real easy for me to grab both washers together, put them on with the nut. It really does speed things along, especially if you're doing multiple trailers. Now we're doing the most important part in the final step of your install. We send two stickers like this with every skirt. 
we ask that you put them on right here. So when you're in that truck stop, and someone asks you where you got that really good looking skirt, you can point them right here. Thanks for watching.